So on sunny days, you're generating far more solar than you can use. And if you're not getting paid for exporting that excess to the grid, is there an opportunity to profit from mining cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin instead? Hey, even if you do get paid for export, could you earn more from mining crypto? Let's find out. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel Gary Does Solar. In my last video I talked about the reasons why export or feed-in tariff rates might be disappearing around the world, and worse, why many countries are starting to charge you for any solar that you export during the middle of the day. So what can you do with all that excess solar? In the video I suggested many ways, including charging your battery, heating your water, charging your EV, shifting heavy appliance use and things like that. A few people in the comments to that video asked if mining cryptocurrencies could be a good option as well, so I thought I'd look into that in this video. And you know how many YouTubers say stick to the end of this video so you don't miss such and such in order to keep you watching? Well you might actually want to stick with me on this, as I think I even surprised myself. So where's a good place to start? Well why don't we talk about what crypto mining actually is? Well it's pretty straightforward really, you just buy one of these units called a miner, plug it into a power outlet at your home, set up an account online and let it run. It might consume 3 kilowatts or more, so if you run it during the middle of the day it should soak up a lot of your excess solar generation. And if you're on a tariff with a cheap import overnight, then you could run it then too. Over time you should see a healthy balance build up on your account, which will hopefully pay for the cost of the unit in time and then generate a nice income. Hang on though, this box doesn't seem to be connected to anything. It's consuming a lot of electricity, but I can't see any form of output, and it's supposedly making you money? What kind of witchcraft is this? Well I guess in life we can just accept the world around us, and just go with the benefits, or we can get under the hood to understand how things actually work. If you're the latter, stay with me and we'll get a bit techy for a moment, Otherwise feel free to skip to the next section, and I wouldn't blame you as you might not get that time back. Just like banks keep records of monetary transactions in ledgers, trusted by everyone in the financial system, cryptocurrencies also rely on ledgers to track transactions. However, instead of a centralised system like the banks use, these ledgers are powered by a technology called blockchain, which is decentralised and publicly accessible. A blockchain, as we'll explore further in a moment, is maintained and verified by a distributed network of participants known as crypto miners, like that unit I showed you earlier. Now the explanation I'm about to give is simplified, but if you want to understand the technology in more detail, there are plenty of YouTube videos covering blockchain and cryptocurrency in detail. A blockchain, as you might imagine, is a chain of blocks, blocks of data in fact. Each block contains a list of payment transactions which are secured using a cryptographic function known as a hash. The blocks are then chained together using those hashes, forming a public record accessible to everyone using the cryptocurrency in question. Now to understand the role that crypto miners play in this ecosystem, we need to take a closer look at what a hash is. And I should say at this point we'll be concentrating on how things are done with Bitcoin, although the process is similar for many other cryptocurrencies. Let's say I have a mathematical function that takes any input and turns it into a 16 digit number. For example, if I feed it with the text Gary does solar, it generates this number as the output. And by the way, for the same input, the output will never change. But here's the thing, if I change just one letter in the input, say to Gary goes solar, the output will be a markedly different number. Almost all of the digits will change. The function hashes the input data, essentially chopping it up or mixing it into a fixed length numerical output. Now in our simplified example, the mathematical function produces a 16 digit number, but in practice a cryptocurrency hashing algorithm today generates hashes that are 64 hexadecimal digits long. And this increased length makes it almost impossible that two different inputs would ever generate the same output. And that's incredibly important for the system to work. Going further then, let's say the input is a list of payment transactions. It will give the following output. Now we could store that list of payment transactions in a file on the internet for everyone to see. And if anyone tried to change even a single part of that file, 
let's say from $14.50 to $94.50, the resulting hash would no longer match the original one, instantly revealing to everyone that the file had been tampered with. OK, going back to our chain of blocks then. By including the hash of the previous block inside the current one before hashing it, you can see that each block becomes cryptographically linked to the one before it, creating a secure chain, thus making it virtually impossible for any bad actor to change history. So what is the role of all the crypto miners in this system then? Well, their job is to actually generate all of those cryptographic hashes. But with thousands of crypto miners around the world, how do you stop them all from competing to generate the hash for the same block? The solution is actually quite ingenious. All the miners are tasked with generating a hash value that is smaller than a specific target, called a difficulty target. There's a slight problem though. The output of the hashing functions is entirely random. There's no way to predict or force that hash to be below a certain target. To overcome this then, the miners must repeatedly adjust a small additional piece of random data within the block until the resulting hash is smaller than the difficulty target. And the difficulty target itself is chosen to ensure that on average only one miner in the entire network will successfully generate a valid hash, let's say every 10 minutes, regardless of how many miners are actually participating. And when a miner finds a solution, it broadcasts it to the network. The other miners then verify that solution, and if everything checks out, the block is added to the blockchain. And in return, the winning miner is rewarded with newly minted cryptocurrency. So now you can see how having your own crypto miner can generate a regular income over time. So the question is, how much income could a crypto miner like this one generate if it was powered only by excess solar generation or off-peak electricity? There are actually several factors involved when calculating this, including power requirement. These units can consume anything up to three kilowatts or more, which is of course exactly what you need to soak up all that excess solar generation. And that brings us to operational hours. Ideally, the unit will only be operational during the middle of the day when the availability of excess solar is at its highest. But you may also want to run the unit overnight to capitalize on a cheaper import tariff. And if you do, you'll have to take into account the electricity price. This, of course, will be zero if the unit is being powered with excess solar generation. Then, to work out the profitability, you'll need to understand the amount of computing power the unit has, and some units will be more powerful than others. In the previous section, you'll have seen it was all about how many hashes a crypto miner can generate every second, known as the hash rate. The higher that hash rate, the higher the chance the miner has to generate a valid hash and be rewarded for it. A crypto miner like this ant miner S21 can generate 200 trillion hashes per second, an incredible number. Then there is the expected crypto revenue per day based on the cryptocurrency being mined and the hash rate. Your profit per day then is the crypto revenue minus the cost of electricity. Don't forget though that there is a purchase price of the unit itself, your original investment that has to be recovered over time with that profit. You can get some of this information from numerous crypto mining websites. We'll use this one called ASIC Miner Value. I'll put a link to it in the description. I've set the electricity cost per kilowatt hour to zero, but you can also set this to your off-peak import rate if needed. Basically, you look down the list or search for the crypto miner you're interested in buying, and against each entry, you'll see pertinent information, including the hash rate, the power requirement, the currency it can mine, the specific hashing algorithm it supports, and most importantly, the expected revenue per day. Here's our example crypto miner, a Bitmain Ant Miner S21, released to the market in February this year. If we move along the row, you can see the hash rate, 200 terahashes per second, the power requirement, just over 3.5 kilowatts, the currencies it can handle, in this case, just Bitcoin, and the associated hash algorithm, which for Bitcoin is SHA-256. And at the end of the row is the expected profit per day, which is $10.01. Remember that we've zero rated the electricity. And if we click on the name of the miner, we can see the cost of the unit, which here is $3,499. So now that we have these values, we can do the solar excess generation calculation. 
Let's assume there's four hours of sufficient excess solar generation to run the crypto miner every day. There's no electricity to pay for, so we can work out the daily profit to be $1.67, basically a sixth of the crypto revenue per day. But of course we mustn't forget the purchase price of the unit, which would take nearly six years to pay back at this rate of profit. But hey, maybe we can supplement that by also running the crypto miner using a cheap off-peak rate. Let's do that calculation as well. We'll assume a six hour off-peak period and an electricity price per kilowatt hour of seven cents. You can see that even though we're mining for longer, because we now need to include the cost of electricity to run the miner at the time, the daily profit is lower at one dollar and one cent. Let's add the excess solar generation profit to that and we'll get a total profit of two dollars sixty-eight. And considering the purchase price of the unit again, the payback period is reduced to three and a half years, which is better. But I have to say, this is all best case. And in life, as we know, things might not always be like that. Here are some factors then that could impact your profit. Non-sunny days. Not every day will be sunny. And on those days, there won't be any excess solar generation to run your crypto miner. Seasons outside of summer. Depending on the country you live in, there might be a much lower level of solar generation during the winter, again affecting when you can run the miner. Equipment maintenance. With a payback of several years, it's quite possible your crypto miner will need some maintenance, which may result in downtime and cost. Finally, there is cryptocurrency price. The revenue you receive is always in the cryptocurrency that you're mining. And if the price of that cryptocurrency falls, then so will your profit. Here's the price of Bitcoin over the last 12 months. And as you can see, it's quite volatile. If we now go back to the list of most profitable cryptocurrencies, you can see right at the top is Alephium, which uses the Blake 3 hash algorithm. And it's expected to generate a profit of nearly $54 a day. But you'll need to factor in a much more expensive unit to mine it. And if the profitability of the currency you're mining falls, you might not be able to switch to a more profitable cryptocurrency. This is because some units are designed for a specific hash algorithm in order to be as fast as possible. And anyway, even though Alephium might be the most profitable cryptocurrency today, where will it be in a year's time? When I started researching for this video, I was expecting cryptocurrency mining to be far more profitable than it actually is. And by the time we add in all the other factors we looked at, I just don't see it as a viable solution from a financial point of view. And actually, if we look at it from an environmental perspective, there's another problem. The largest and most popular cryptocurrency on the planet is Bitcoin. And if you take 10 minutes out of your day to read this UN study report, it's quite sobering just how bad Bitcoin is for the environment. Just one example, the UN scientists report that Bitcoin mining relies heavily on fossil fuel energy sources, with coal accounting for 45% of Bitcoin's energy supply mix, followed by natural gas at 21%. Now I don't know about you, but having installed solar for environmental reasons as well as financial, I couldn't in good conscience use my excess solar generation to mine Bitcoin. I'd effectively be supporting a system that sustains a whole industry known to have severe environmental impacts. But what's your view on this? Let me know in the comments. Now I might not be able to respond to them all, but I do read them, and I know many others read your comments too, so thank you for taking the time to write them. Okay, I don't know about you, but when making this video, I learned a fair bit about cryptocurrency mining and whether it makes sense or not to mine crypto with your excess solar generation. So please don't forget to like this video if you did too, and also subscribe to see the many videos I'm working on at the moment. Until then, have a good one.